You knew we were going to do this, right? Aerospace Damascus. I don't really know what else to call it, so that's what I'm calling it right now. Last video, I took this Mar Aging Steel, forged it, got it prepped for the billet. Today, drum roll, we're taking in niobium to weld with this Mar Aging Steel. Big shout out to Sack and Metals for supplying me with this material and the Mar Aging Steel. If you're looking for these exotic space steels and whatnot, highly recommend you check them out. One thing that I super appreciate about Sack and Metals is that if you need just a little bit, they'll sell you just a little bit. You don't have to buy this 100 feet and you only need two feet, right? So I'll put the link for them down below. Thank you guys. But for now, let's take a look at what's going on. I'm just gonna sit down. We're gonna talk a little bit. So I've actually had this idea in my mind for a while and been trying to figure out what materials to combine together to try to get this aerospace Damascus. I actually, again, I don't know if it, you could classify it as Damascus, but basically try to forge weld two aerospace steels together. That's what I'm trying to go for. So this is the niobium, and this sort of was the first material that I wanted to try to play with because it has apparently a really high melting temperature. 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit, which is crazy to use in rocket nozzles or in places where you need extreme um, strength and high temperature applications. So I was looking for other materials that would have a similar melting point so that we could forge well these together. And so that's why I landed with this Mar Aging Steel. But as it turns out, I was incorrectly informed about Mar Aging Steel. Last video, I said it melted at 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit and that apparently is not true. It actually melts at more like 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So that puts me at a really big disposition because these two materials are melting at a different temperature. So I still wanna to try to play, to fuse these two together. Could totally fall flat on my face here and this could not work, but I still wanna try it. This has some characteristics that I really think would be cool to see in a layer type of material. So we are gonna to try today to continue on the plan, cutting this up and making it into a billet and try to fuse these together. Will it work? I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out. So that'll be the fun of today. All right, let's see how this stuff machines. Woo, stress is on. So what the plan is right now, I got my two layers of material. This is the, the, the insides, the two layers, and then we're gonna build a case around it with the niobium. Why am I telling you all this? Let's just show you, let's just go. Okay, we're going, here we go. So I figured just before I close it up, this is the best shot at seeing how this is all gonna work. The thick stuff is the mar aging steel and the thin stuff is the niobium. And then what I've done on the edges is I put two layers of the niobium so that that is actually what I'm welding to and that is hopefully gonna be like a canister with these guys all loose in here. And then I guess the hope is that, I'll put, uh, of course cap it, that's why I'm showing it to you right now when it's open. It'll be fully enclosed, and then the hope is that when it gets heated up, that the mar aging steel will become liquid or semi liquid and fuse or bond to the niobium through here. And then the outside is gonna, I don't think it's gonna really deteriorate because it's so, can withstand such high temperature. But if it does, I've got two layers that I can grind out and get rid of that to get in to see that pattern. But I think it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna cap that on there and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. 
putting it in the forge. I actually just have the forge turned off just so I could get it in here. But um, I have uh, basically no idea what's going to happen now. The plan is I'm going to keep the forge at a lower temperature, get the core of it hot, and then bring it up and very closely watch what's going on. I'm going to grab some darker shaded glasses so I can really see. And then once it's up to temperature, what I think it is, I'm going to take it to the anvil and just use my hand hammer to work it so I can really feel what's going on before going to any power tools like the power hammer, if I even go to that. So let's get this going and cross our fingers. Feels super solid. And the top, I know you probably can't see that, but the top plate has sunk down. Feels super hard though. All right, back to the forge. Yeah, that feels good. Wow. This is very interesting. I tapped it again, and I don't know if you could see a couple things were flying out. This plate sunk, and then I had this huge bulge of molten material come out the side here. I was gonna just tap it and then go to the power hammer. I'm glad I didn't. So what I'm gonna do, I guess, is just let this cool off, and I wanna see what it looks like on the inside. And I don't know if that was just me overheating it, or, you know, I really don't know at this point. So we're gonna let it cool off and just see how it looks. Not sure if that's a good sign or a bad sign. It's crazy. So this is cooled off now. Just thought we'd take a little bit of a closer look at this. All this molten metal came out so super glad that I did not go to the power hammer because if I would have tapped that on the power hammer, we would have blown molten metal everywhere. It would have completely blown this thing apart. I wish that I would have done the first heat, let it cooled out of the welding temperature and then tried forging it to see how it would have gone better. I wanna cut it open now and see what this looks like. I feel like if this worked or didn't work, we'll still be able to determine that by cutting it open and seeing what it looks like. I feel a little bit disappointed with where it's at, but at the same time, it's the first one we're figuring this out. So really excited to cut it open and see what it looks like. So I just got this cut and I cut both sides off. It's ridiculously hard to cut. The bandsaw didn't even touch it. I went through six five inch cutting discs to get this thing, just these ends cut off. It's just gnarly. But here you can see, this is where that molten metal spewed out. It's like literally one of those Mar aging steel slots, I guess one and a half there. And it goes right through. If you pick it up, I can actually see the hole on this side of where the material came out. Super interesting to 
to look at that. I'm, I'm just guessing that I overheated it excessively. The good news is though, there is some good news. This all in here, right through to this side, looks very solid. And it looks, well, as far as I can tell, I guess if I open it up, we'll see. But I'm really optimistic that this will work and use a little bit of steel out of this. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to do two things before I say this test is done, is I'm gonna cut, if I can, a good chunk out and stick it back in the forge and reheat it and try forging it just to see sort of how those layers react to each other while moving. And then the second thing, I'm gonna grab a piece out, sand and polish it, and then etch it and see, you know, what this pattern looks like. What are we going after sort of at the end of the day? So just with the amount of time I have left in the day, I had to call in the big guns, Mr. Martin, to help me out with the machining. So the plan sort of just changed. I'm actually just gonna machine this thing enough while well, Martin's gonna machine it enough that we can get a clean surface to sand and then I wanna start etching it and just seeing what that contrast looked like before I try forging it because I'm pretty confident that we can forge it. So I don't wanna spend my time working on that if this isn't gonna look cool. So that's why we're doing it this way. So I've just got this up to 600 grit here. You have got to see this. So this is the unbelievable part. It's just mind blowing that that is at 600 grit, there's no etch, and you can see everything that happened. And what's crazy is that all the niobium uh, condensed, it moved down and all the mar aging steel went fully liquid and melted around everything and encased it. I still can't believe it. I'm actually gonna zoom you in closer, hang on. So here is a closer up, and you can see that the top two layers is where I had all that molten steel blow out, but the rest of it, I'm actually gonna move you again. The rest of it here is really good. I don't know what that one sliver is here of mar aging steel, and I don't know what's going on there, but look at how the Mar Aging Steel was even able to go through that crack and encompass between the two layers of the niobium. It did that here too. So it's just, it's absolutely incredible. So there's one more thing to try on this test before I conclude it. We're gonna try anodizing this because apparently niobium can be anodized and I'm hoping that all these little strips of the niobium will anodize and then the rest of this will just stay the way it is. And I think that would be so cool on the finished project to have that ability to do that. Let's do this thing. Anodization happening. Okay, going in. This always feels weird. Okay, this should do the trick. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what it looks like. Nope, no change, not even one. I've just been playing off camera here for probably about an hour trying different things. I've tried every combination of sanding, etching. I even tried some ferric chloride and it's not working. The, interestingly, the, the side is anodizing, but the inside is not at all. So either my etch, my multi-etch is the incorrect etch to use, or it's bad, or it doesn't work because the niobium is polluted, I guess, from the mar aging steel. Not sure, so I'm gonna let this sit a little bit more just to make sure. And then if that doesn't work, we'll pick it up from there. 
So that's going to conclude the testing for this piece here. The anodization did not work, or it worked on the outside but not the inside. I'm super stoked on how the Mar aging steel completely melted and fused, and the niobium held it all together. That's super fascinating to me, and I'm really looking forward to playing with that idea and pushing it in different ways in the future. So definitely not a failure on my part, just a learning experience test knowledge, I guess. So anyways, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would just love it if you would. For all of those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And we will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great one until then. Positive to negative. That was probably the dumbest thing I've done all day. That was not on camera, right? <laughs>